Hey everybody, RPG here. Today I'm gonna to do a full demo and review of this brand new product that I literally just stumbled across on Amazon the other day. I was doing a couple different um, gaming purchases on there and their algorithm recommended this product to me. So I'm gonna show you guys the box. It's a portable gaming console um, that also doubles as an alarm clock. So it's kind of a random uh, combination of two products in one, but it looks super cool. You got that retro sort of TV set up there with like the old school antennas. Comes with two Bluetooth gamepad controllers and you have the ability to connect this console to your TV or monitor. So you can game right from this as a console, but up on a big screen, which is really cool. So um, the box here lists a ton of different um, functions and features here, but on the box it says that there is uh, 5,000 plus games on this little console. So right off the bat, um, it doesn't really list what collections are on here, but that to me seems like a massive collection. There's a 32 gigabyte card that's installed within here, uh, which has an operating system that you know obviously has different emulators and whatnot, but I don't know much more than that. Um, there's a bunch of different information here. It's you know, kind of vague. So I'm rooting for this product because it looks super cool, but all I had to go off of was the picture and, you know, the little bit of information that is available on the box itself. So I'm rooting for the product because it seems like a really cool idea. Um, it only costs about 75 bucks on Amazon. Not that that's super cheap, but in terms of like a gaming console, that's pretty much as cheap as you're gonna get for something that comes with supposedly 5,000 plus games. So I'm rooting for the product. Hopefully this wasn't a waste of time and money, but um, we're gonna open this up. We're going to test it out. Let's see what happens. All right, so I've just unboxed everything here just to make this video a little bit easier, but here I have two gamepad controllers. This does come with two. One I left in the box because it's just me here, so I'm gonna set that aside. But let's take a closer look at this gamepad controller because in all honesty, I was expecting these to be probably half this size. I really didn't think these were gonna be big at all, just you know, considering the fact that this is a pretty small sort of all-in-one type of console here with the screen and everything. I didn't expect these to be you know, full size like this. So taking a closer look at the actual gamepad controller here, it's really actually nice. Uh, fits in your hands really nicely, comparable to that of like a uh, Super Nintendo controller or um, like an 8-bit Doe gamepad controller. Obviously the quality is gonna be much less than 8-bit Doe, but um, really nice functionality and nice pop to the buttons here. Great feedback, great fit to your hand. Shoulder buttons up top, so that gives you some additional options. Uh, no binding or anything like that, just great action on all the buttons. And this D-pad here, if you've seen any of my review videos in the past for different gamepad controllers or products, you know that I absolutely love D-pads like this. It's that old Sega sort of feel. It's not your typical cross D-pad, which we have in a lot of gamepad controllers. This is that you know Sega style where it's rounded, so you can hit those uh, in between directional um, uh, buttons super easily. You know, on a cross one, it's just up, down, left, and right. So to go on those diagonals is really hard. I love these that they're rounded. Great um, roll to it. I just love these um, always on any gamepad controllers that I see them on. So. Um, this is just really exceeding my expectations here. So on the back, we have player one and player two. So that's how you would select, you know, which game pad is gonna be player one, which is gonna be player two. Love that, so you don't have to worry about picking them up and, you know, going off a of feel like in the game or whatever. Uh, you can just switch it to what you want it to be and you're good to go. I love that functionality here. So uh, moving on from this, what else comes with this? We have our charging cable right here. If we flip our console over, uh, we could plug it in right here, charge this up. When I saw this, I thought it was gonna be battery powered, but I was surprised to see that um, you know it takes a charge. So that's really cool. Here we have our connection. We can connect this to a TV. So this isn't HDMI, uh, it is an old school connection, but I noticed on the back that we do have a um, HDMI output here. So we just have to pop that in and we're able to utilize that. It doesn't come with that cable, but um, we should be able to connect that to a TV via, I believe, I'm not going to pop this, but I believe that's a mini HDMI output. Pretty sure that's a mini. It's definitely not a micro. Micro is uh, much, much smaller than that. So it's got to be a, uh, a mini there. So um, let me 
So we got these here, we're good there. We also have a manual here, which I want to take a look at because for products like this, you can tell a lot from the manual. So just kind of sliding it open, there's a whole lot of information on here. Now, I haven't read through all of this, but just looking at the diagrams here, they're pretty in depth. They show you all the different functions for all the keys on the controllers, as well as for the um, console itself here. So whole lot going on. Really like that they're super detailed like this. Uh, we also have some pictures here. So we have different parts from within this actual setup. So um, it looks like alarm settings. So yeah, everything is really well detailed here. It says how to select the uh, date settings, time settings, all that good stuff. So really nicely done in terms of the um, manual here. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed so far. So let's see if this powers on and you know, see what the performance is like on this. All right, so I'm gonna power this on. So we have our power button right here, speakers right here, uh, two dials, first dial is volume, second is brightness. So I'm gonna just max out brightness so it's super bright. Volume, I'm gonna leave halfway just so we don't, uh, you know, blast this too loud, but let's hit the power button and see what happens. Got a little loading screen, popping in. Uh, let's see how long it takes to boot up. All right, it seems to be booted up. We have the date, time, uh, day here, all of which is totally wrong. It says it's 20, uh, 40, 2040 for the year, uh, but that's you know hasn't been set or anything. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not worried about setting it because I don't really care about the alarm clock side of this. I'm sure all that can be easily adjusted just by following the instructions. In fact, that seems to be the first page on the instruction manual, but I want to see what the gaming is like on here. That's what we can't really care about, right? So. Let's take a look at our controller. Um, I believe we hit start and select at the same time to jump into the uh, console. Oh, it helps if I turn the controller on. Start and select at the same time should jump us into the console collection here, so it does. Uh, I'm just gonna try to move this in so you can see better. Now bear with me, this is a, obviously a video of a video screen, so the resolution is gonna be uh, pretty crappy, Just you know, looking at it, but the um, quality of the screen is actually phenomenal. I'm actually really impressed by, you know, how crisp this screen is. So again, bear with me because this is a video of a video screen, so you're gonna lose resolution. But in terms of our collections here, we have Neo Geo, which I just spot right off of the bat. Here it has an arcade. Uh, up here at the top, it says CPS1, uh, which I'm assuming is Capcom System 1. Uh, moving on, Super Nintendo there, SFC, that would be Super Famicom console, I guess. MD, Mega Drive, um, Famicom, Game Boy Color, looks like Game Boy Advance. Well, it says Game Boy there. I'm assuming Game Boy or Game Boy Advance. Um, this one would be Sega Master System. That's a Dreamcast controller there, but it says GG uh, oh, Game Gear, that makes sense. And then here we have SG, so I'm assuming SG-1000. So let me go back to the front here and let's jump into a collection. Um, let's jump into Neo Geo here. So B is your enter button. These look to be abbreviated titles here, but we have the count, we're on title three, and there's 92 total. Oh, well, that's cool. It's not just box art. There's actually a little video preview for each title. Um, not sure if that's gonna be consistent for each title. Seems to be. Let's jump down past Metal Slug. Metal Slug is probably the most popular one for Neo Geo. Um, wow, yeah, it seems to be for every title. So let me back out of this collection. I don't know if that's gonna be consistent through all the collections, but let's jump into what I assume is Capcom system. And um, we're on Punisher right now. Yeah, that's a nice video preview for these as well. So this one only has 32 games, but that's actually um, pretty good considering the collection. So we have all our Street Fighters in here, Mega Man. The titles are abbreviated here, so um, you may have to kind of look for titles as opposed to, and they don't appear to necessarily be in alphabetical order since S is up there, M is down here, but um, you may have to kind of read into the abbreviations a little bit to know exactly what you're looking at, but uh, let me back out of this collection. 
And we'll jump into some titles and do some demos in a second. I just want to see the collection. So Super Famicom, I'm assuming. Let's jump in here. Oh, wow. 1456 for titles. That's awesome. Super Metroid. Wow. And gameplay demos for these as well. Super Mario Kart. Wow, this this is sharp. I'm impressed so far. Yeah, of course, make sure that the games actually work, but really impressive. So let's back out of this one. Just gonna jump into each one real quick. Um, B is oh A is back. Okay, makes sense. Um, Mega Drive. I'm assuming nine hundred forty-three Mega Drive games. So. Really, really sharp. Super Mario World for, okay. Wow, I'm liking it. All right, let me um, back out of this one. I wanna just see a couple more. I'm not worried about Game Boy so much. Um, Master System. Let's see, let's make sure this is Game Gear because it's got a Dreamcast um, controller there for the icon, but there's no way Dreamcast would work on something like this. I, I can't imagine. Um, yeah, these are all Game Gear titles. Um, yeah, Game Gear right there. Boom. So this one doesn't appear to have previews. This one looks like box art, which is fine. Um, having those videos probably takes up a decent amount of space. And this is actually a 32 gigabyte card on here. So the fact that we have all these, um, you know, bells and whistles in terms of like the um, layout and stuff is, is pretty cool because 32 gigabyte card is pretty small. So um, granted, these are older games and, you know, each game doesn't take up much space at all, but still 32 gigabytes is still a relatively small card. So let me uh, back out again and let's go into, um, yeah, SG-1000 doesn't get me too excited, but still cool to have on there. Uh, let's start jumping into some titles now. So let me go into, I um, always love uh, Capcom. So let's go into Punisher was probably my favorite game and I did see that here. So let me jump into Punisher. Um, I love Street Fighter as well, but I'm absolutely terrible at Street Fighter. I don't feel like embarrassing myself today. Let's jump into Punisher and let's, let's hope that the games actually work because so far this is, this is really awesome. Uh, so start on the gamepad controller, selects the games. A little loading screen here. Let's see how long it takes to load. No time at all, that's awesome. So start doesn't seem to be, oh, it's arcade, all right? Yeah, select, duh, get out of your coins. So select Punisher, and let's see what the uh, gameplay experience is like. Let me up the volume a little. Oh wow, nice movement. Just figuring out what the buttons are. Speed on the punches, a little cutscene. So I'll just put this here so you can kind of see that too. So we got the gun. So I don't want to spend too much time in, in any specific title, but this is awesome. It's kind of sucking me right into this. Performance is phenomenal in here. Wow. Like really nice movement, super smooth. So let me um, hit menu and jump out. At, what is that? Oh, you can save and load your states too? That is awesome. 
So let me see if I can save this. Uh, let's see, what does it say? This. All right, so I just saved. Is it do a screenshot? Wow, so it actually screenshots your progress. So this is a screenshot of where I am in the game and it saves that. So let me go to load. Obviously I'm in the same spot, but uh, you know, matter of fact, let me jump out of here um, and let me just jump back in. I just want to see what that's, if that save state actually works because that's impressive. Um, start to load the game. I'm just finding a lot of stuff, a lot of features here that you wouldn't expect on something, um, something like this, which I just, maybe I just didn't give it enough credit, um, but I didn't think this would have all these capabilities. So let me go to menu and load now. And that's our screenshot from before of where we were in the game when I saved it. So let me select that. Wow, there he is with the bat and everything right where we left off. That's incredible, really impressive. Um, so I don't wanna to spend too much time again on one title that I'll just keep getting sidetracked here, but let me quit this game. Let's jump out of the Capcom collection and let's jump into a different collection because that was just super smooth. Performance was phenomenal. Um, so we'll back out, that was Capcom. Let's go into, is this Master System? Let's go into Master System and let me find like a um, Sonic, Wait, it says Hedgehog there. Let me see if that's Sonic. Sure enough, wow. So, um, you know, obviously this shouldn't be labeled as Hedgehog. It should be under Sonic the Hedgehog, so it should be under the S's, but, and this seems to be in alphabetical order in this collection. So uh, that's typical for stuff like this from overseas. Sometimes you have abbreviations, sometimes you have misspellings, sometimes things are alphabetical order, sometimes they're just random. So you might have to spend a little extra time searching for specific titles, but uh, in this case, it actually saved me because I didn't have to go all the way down to the S's. So let me jump in here. Um, I keep hitting B to select, it's always start to get into games. Interested to see how Sonic is. I mean, seems to be working. Not that this is hard to emulate, but this is a fast paced game. Um, so usually you do, um, you know, if you're gonna have issues, you see them pretty quickly on fast games like this. Bear with me. It's been a while, <laughs> can you tell? Um, so I'm not gonna try to like play this like I normally would. I just wanna test the performance out. Try to get a little straight away going and see what the speed is like on here. Yeah, the, the performance is great here. Nice speed and everything. I'm not seeing like lags with the buttons or anything like that. Um, maybe like the occasional little slight glitch if I'm really like straining to pick up on things, but um, not bad at all. All right, so before I get sucked into this game too, let me jump out. And sure enough, we have our save and load states that we can do on here. I'm going to um, just you know, jump out of the game and the collection too, because there's nothing else I really need to see within here. If that works, I'm confident everything is going to work. And what else? So these are not going to be an issue. Those are much simpler than what we were just in. Let me go into, um, let's go into Neo Geo, because uh, I saw Metal Slug, and Metal Slug is uh, a game where you can get it pretty fast paced at times. I wanna see what the performance is like there. And it's also a title I'm super familiar with. So um, which one do we want? Let's go with, let's do Metal Slug 4. Obviously a little bit more advanced than the earlier ones. So this would be a good way to test. So um, looks like the loading screen here, it's gonna take a little while. It doesn't seem to be going as quick as the other ones, but to be fair, these games are super long. If you've ever played through a Metal Slug game, there's just like a ton of levels. So 
I'm not surprised it takes a little longer to load this title up. All right, so I didn't want to make you guys wait with me, but that took literally two full minutes to load up, uh, which isn't terrible. It's obviously not instant, but um, not bad. So let's add coins and get into this. So I'm interested to see how this is. Navigation skill. Got a little overzealous there, but. Gun shoots perfect. I mean, it's working perfectly here. Forgot this is a challenging one right from the start. same deal save and load is consistent throughout all of these titles so we can just quit but yeah I mean everything is perfect about this so uh, I don't have this type of connection on my TV to test that out and I don't happen um, let me just move this so it doesn't drown me out here um, I don't actually have either a um, mini HDMI to make it the uh, connection but um, I'm, I'm fully confident that this connects to the TV just like it's advertised to do without a hitch. All right guys, so I cannot stress this enough. Going into this demo and review today, I really didn't have uh, my expectations set very high at all. You know, for 75 bucks, like I said before, it's not chump change by any means, but it's not a high price point for a console that talks about 5,000 plus retro video games. Now, I didn't expect the collections to be as awesome as they are. You have Nintendo, you have uh, Famicom, you have a bunch of Sega collections, you have some arcade collections, specifically Capcom, which is one of my personal favorites. Tons of games in here. I played Sonic on here, I played The Punisher, two of my favorite retro video games of all time. Everything ran super smoothly. Now, in terms of the layouts, they can be a little bit sloppy uh, in terms of how they're like, sp like spelling and abbreviations and whatnot. Um, not everything's in alphabetical order. We saw with Sonic the Hedgehog, it was listed as Hedgehog, not Sonic. So if you're in there and you're scrolling down to the S's hoping to find Sonic, you're going to be um, you know, out of luck if you didn't catch that it's listed as uh, Hedgehog instead. So stuff like that, you kind of have to get creative thinking about, okay, if it's not in this collection or under this um, letter title, maybe it's under this one. You know, you have to kind of play a little game trying to locate some of the titles. But um, at, on the other end of that, there's not only box art, but there's previews for most of the titles in this console. So you know, stuff like that is just far exceeding my expectations. Now, in the actual games, performance was flawless. Uh, no lags or delays or anything like that. Not that these collections that are included on here are typically hard to emulate, but this is a super compact console, only powered by a 32 gigabyte um, micro SD card. So all that being said, the performance here, again, far exceeded my expectations. I also love the fact that we have save and load states for each title. And then they also, on top of that, as if that wasn't enough, they give you that little screenshot, which just takes a picture of where you are in the game. So you can, you know, if you're playing a game like Sonic, for example, and you're saving multiple times, you may not remember like which save state you were into. So you can look at the picture and see, okay, this is level three, this is level two, and be able to choose from that as well. So. Another amazing feature that you don't see in a lot of consoles, let alone a super compact portable console like this, that you can connect to a TV. Now in this video today, 
Uh, I did not connect this to my TV. That was only because I don't have on hand the micro or mini rather HDMI cable to connect this to my TV. And the cables that were provided are the old school connections, which I just don't have on the TV that I have with me here in this room today. So um, given the fact that everything has far exceeded my expectations so far, I am 100% confident that it is going to be able to connect to a TV or monitor and work perfectly. So everything about this is awesome. The quality of sound, brightness, the picture in this little screen here is awesome. So I'm totally blown away and I honestly figured that this would be, you know, like a out of a 10 star rating, I figured this would be like a three, you know, 75 bucks, um, no clear like um, name brand manufacturer or company that put this out or anything like that. I just figured it was going to be, um, you know, a miss in all honesty. And this is not a miss at all. You know, obviously if you're into Raspberry Pi and you already have Raspberry Pi, then you probably don't necessarily have a need for something like this, but it is pretty cool. So um, if you're somebody that's just looking to maybe just start out in retro gaming, this is a great way to do so. 75 bucks, you have a portable console, you could take this with you on the go. It holds a great battery charge on here, so you don't have to worry about, you know, playing for five minutes and the battery crapping out. It's gonna last you multiple hours. Um, obviously, depending on what games you're in, if you're playing something that's a little bit more advanced, like we jumped into uh, Metal Slug, that's obviously going to draw a little bit more than something like Punisher or um, Sonic the Hedgehog, but for the most part, you're gonna get multiple hours out of the battery life on here. So again, if you're just getting into retro gaming and you don't necessarily wanna go out and spend money on a huge build or PC or a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card, you wanna kinda of, uh, get your beak wet on something like this, this is awesome, 75 bucks. You got your controllers included in there. You have the ability to connect it to a TV or monitor. Everything out of the box will easily get you started retro gaming at a pretty affordable price point. So highly recommend this product. And I'm, again, I'm just totally blown away by the fact that I'm saying all this because jumping into this video today, just picking this up, opening the box and all that, I didn't think that it was going to go this way at all. I didn't expect this to be as much of a uh, little powerhouse console as it is. So strong uh, two thumbs up on this, totally blown away, highly recommend it. At the very least, at least check it out. I'm gonna put a direct link in the uh, description of this video for you guys today so you can jump down there, click that link, and at least get some more information on this. So again, highly recommend it. Um, you won't be disappointed by this at all. So that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed this. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do a ton of videos like this. We do gameplay demos, product reviews, uh, tutorials to you know tackle different um, tasks that you may run into on Botticera, RetroPie, different emulation platforms out there. So lots of great content on here. Best way to stay in the loop is to smash the like button and to subscribe for all of our updates here on the RetroPie Guy YouTube channel. So again, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching.